Uh, today in the shop actually turned into two days in the shop without me expecting it. A bunch of unexpected things happened, and most of them good. Karen decided early in the day she wanted to put up the shelf. She got the weather report, and they said it's going to be warm later in the week. So we decided we'd spend a good part of the day uh, doing that. And Turbo Steve stopped by with a nice visit. We went to see Buddy for a nice visit. Vlad canceled his trip. We were going to meet with him today and get the sprocket and get some, go get some paint with him. Well, so we just reoriented the whole day into the next day. Started from scratch. I started on getting the Ducati panel that needs more clear, totally sanded out. And this was, this became an all day labor of love as a lot of parts of this Ducati project are. I wound up spending a lot of extra time on it, but I think I got it really, really ironed out, all the little things that were bothering me about it. And I have to be very careful about the decals on this because they are really a lot thicker than the decals we're used to using the water slide decals. But as always, in the end, it worked out all to my advantage, to, to Joe's advantage. I was really happy when I put the part in the garage to dry overnight. And as I closed the door, I looked back and I, I said to myself, mission accomplished. So today we have an, another what looks like a, a high wind day, just what we need, what we haven't had enough of. Ah, I don't know where this wind is all coming from. Vlad is supposed to stop by this morning. That's number one. I want to see what he has in mind. We're supposed to go up to Gavin's, get some custom paint mixed, see what he has in mind for his project. I... I don't think there's going to be any painting today based on how that wind is blowing. So I, but this is what's happened that's really held us back this winter is it's so unpredictable. It's supposed to rain, it doesn't rain. It's supposed to snow, it snows four, four feet. And every day I've got a plan if, if we're going to be able to paint or if we're not going to be able to paint. And today is one of those days. Now our ongoing testing with the wind slayers and I, all I can say is it's ongoing. It seems like we made a little progress here and there. But I know the big progress is going to be when I get a final, uh, some of this material. It seems to block all the wind noise on the GoPro. I somehow get this to go over the whole Canon camera. But the problem with the Canon camera too is the lens retracts and comes back. The button, you have to be able to get it to button. So I'm, what I'm going to try to do in the future, not today, is take the, I have two of these, order two more, this is the plan anyway, and cut one up and try to get a piece, just a piece that goes over the microphone. That's coming, testing is ongoing, but it took us a look, well, actually it took Turbo Steve and I working together, Steve did all the, the uh, discovery on it, and I bought the wrong products, And but in the end we got it, and that's all that matters, is in the bottom of the ninth, we got it, I think we're gonna get it, but not today, I don't think. So one of the bad byproducts of this weather is the pond has been freezing, unfreezing, freezing, unfreezing, and every morning I have this job of with the wind blowing. It seems like I have a half hour out there cleaning the pond every morning, but if I don't do that, I risk losing fish, and I don't want to do that. So Vlad is bringing a sprocket for this project that will complete the, black, the back wheel. I would be able to then, of course, if I had a day, a rainy day or something, I could swap out the one wheel. But I want what I thought would be more appropriate is get the both wheels finished, tire, new tires installed and whatnot. And I'm just changing my mind as this go, job goes by. Because when I pull the front end apart, I've got to pull the discs off. It's going to be a day of cleaning and polishing discs and whatever. Maybe or maybe not new brake pucks. I don't know, so I don't, the good news about all these jobs, I'm not in a, I don't have to rush. And in my mind, I confirmed when I did this restoration, if you don't rush it, you take plenty of time, and you're not itching to go for a ride that afternoon, the quality to work just gets better and better, and I think this is living proof of that. And if all else fails, we just ride one of the modern bikes, so we have them all, old, medium, and of course two strokes. If you really want to have an adventure in old, being old, you take out the RG and run up to Luciano's and see how his H1 is coming. I haven't even gotten up there yet. I apologize for that, but we've just been really, really crazy year. And boy, the wind is already kicking up out here and it is brutally cold. It is way below freezing here. Now I had some people tell me what I should try. I just thought of this right now while I'm out here. <clears throat> 
is just put a little bit of blue tape over the microphone and see if that totally blocks off the sound or if it mutes out some of the wind. It's only going to take a minute and I'm waiting for Vlad to get here anyway. I haven't even had my coffee yet. I figured if, with the wind blowing, I may as well take advantage of the fact the wind is blowing here. Okay, so the wind isn't blowing anywhere as near as bad as yesterday, but it's still blowing. So what I'm going to try to do is just take a little piece of blue tape, put it over the microphone, and then record with the tape on, with the tape off. It will only take a minute, and then I'm going to go have my coffee. So now there's a little piece of blue tape over the microphone hole on the camera. I'm not sure this is going to make any difference, but at this point in time I'm willing to try everything. And what happens with all these things, as Turbo Steve found out, you got to try several things and all of a sudden one works. And something you thought would work, or they say would work, doesn't work. And then all of a sudden something you stumble on. Not that this is going to work, but we'll look at it at the footage later. Anyway, time, it's time to have coffee. Now the wind is blowing pretty good now, so I don't know, but that blue tape, you, 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 but the only way you find these things out is if you actually do the test. And the last of the battery chargers is on, and it's time for coffee. So as I look at the wind blowing here, I just think, this is the story of this winter, the wind and the crazy weather. Well, when you get cold and that pond is clean now, we're pretty much ready to start the day. You see the birdhouse even blowing around out there, the little feeder. Holy mackerel, what a day. Oh, as we get in the shop, there is nothing, nothing to compare with that cup of coffee in the morning. <laughs> That's really funny. So, what I'm trying to evaluate here, because Vlad's going to be here soon, I really don't want to start anything, maybe even not even start anything today based on how the weather is, but well, here's where we stand with all the projects. This part is pretty much ready for final sanding and buffing. This part needs one more coat of clear. This part's ready. Now that I have the sprocket, I have all the parts of that together. And I really want to take a thousand grit down the whole wheel or sand it and get more, more than one more coat of clear on that. And let me explain why. If you look at how this, this last coat laid out, it's like just liquidy. I don't need to even think about buffing that. This one needs one more coat of clear. And now most people would be really, really happy. In fact, you could see your fingers in it. They would love that. It would, that would be fine. But because of the weather... <laughs> It's held up our production, or that would already be done. We already have the tires ready to mount. We have all the stuff ready to buff. And by the end of this day, once we get Vlad's parts in-house, we'll figure out what we want to do. Now luckily I mark all these for the touch-up because Steve, Steve needs a touch-up. He stopped by and we have... Now we don't know which is which though. <laughs> So he brought two jars. Why don't you just take the cans and hey, save the yeah, jars? I could use the jars. It's got the formula. I, I, I just exactly want, the same or almost the same? This one says bright red. They're both from Gavin's. This is Gavin's. Thing. This says one point magenta strong. No, I guess they are different. I, at least the percentage of the formula. But I thought I picked well, you're a good cook. Mix it up. Put a tomato in there and uh, make which, Italian which is, soup out of it. Which is the oldest one? It's probably open. You have lunch in there. No one in there. How cold was it yesterday? I don't remember. It was, it was cold, I think. The high was 34. So Turbo Steve has the full touch-up kit for his Vigioni. And we're still waiting for Vlad to get here. Vlad has a record of he always stops at the vodka place on the way here. <laughs> He's never really on time. So both Vlad and I, in the meantime, while we were waiting to run the Gavins, we both had a little change of plan. We have some family stuff to do, and so does Vlad. So we're just going to postpone everything till a couple days from now. That's why I try to keep my life flexible, because you never know, in my family's case, and in Vlad's family case too, you turn around and something comes along. Anyway, I don't know what we're going to do the rest of the day, but Karen's got some errands. As long as we're going to have a day of errands, these things come up. And very unexpectedly. Well, one thing is for sure, it's never a Groundhog Day life. So what Karen thought would be a good idea today, and I think I am too. Last year, you might remember if you're a sort of lifetime subscriber, and who isn't, let's face it. Everybody loves to see Karen's garden. 
We had plants all along the shelves and we put a table in here. Well, what we decided to do just to take advantage of that this room is in direct sunlight, we're going to build a shelf right down the middle of the room to do starter plants. And today we're going to head to Lowe's and get the material. So it is still snow on the ground and it's, I just checked the weather the next couple of days. There's going to be some days that are going to be great riding days. So if I can get this out of the way today while the wind is howling, be a big step forward. So it looks like we might be near the end of having a snow melt up here, hopefully. So here's what I like about having an unpredictable day. Listen to that wind noise. Oh, and they already have their summer stuff. They're starting to put out the summer stuff. It's freezing out here. Pretty soon I'll be shopping for my new grill. I'm going to become the grillmeister this summer. Can't come to Lowe's without getting 40 pounds of bird seeds. My birds would, they'll be pooping on my car if I avoid getting them seeds. It's time to buy seeds. <laughs> bird seeds and more seeds. So what did you decide to buy here? Lettuce, mesquite, eggplant, peppers, and We're going to be so healthy. We are. It's unbelievable. We're going to have plenty of room on that window shelf. That's where I'm glad I have a minivan. I got my 12-foot shelf right in the minivan with an inch to spare. What? Okay, buddy, you're a mean dog. You're a mean dog. Let's see. How mean are you? Razor teeth. Hey, razor teeth. Hey, razor teeth. Razor teeth. Buddy, you're a mean dog. Hey, those razor teeth. Hey, hey. Ah, ah, ah. Razor teeth. Razor teeth. Needs to go to the trainer. Grandpa Wendy the dog trainer. Ah, razor teeth. 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 Ah! Razor teeth. Razor teeth. Razor teeth. So we delivered all the kids' food. Had a nice visit with Buddy. We're going home. I don't know. It's cold there. Now after a really fun visit, we got one last thing I want to do today before the day ends. I want to take that shelf, jig it up. I want to put a, a coat of gloss white on it because we're going to have plants with being watered and dirt and everything. And I bought some brackets. They didn't have white ones, so simple dimple. Paint them up. One thing about this shop, the project table is always overflowing with something to do. Now it's funny, the plants today have changed by the hour and had a nice, at least a nice visit with Turbo Steve here, talking about the problems of the world and the uh, motorcycle adventures we've had with old bikes. It was a nice visit. Sorry I missed Vlad today. That was, well, we both have things going on in our life. It's just, uh, we're definitely not bachelors. Let's just put it this way. Anyway, I do want to get this painted before the day ends and it's still light out there, even though we had a crazy busy day. If I can get this painted today and get this all drying up, and tomorrow I can start working on my projects, and it's to my advantage, because all of these parts have an extra day of drying, whether you're buffing things out or wet sanding, an extra day of dry time always in your favor. I had to kill off all the sand out of this, this part of it. I tried to put the, uh, the redundant part on fast forward, but... I know Karen wanted to see this shelf being painted today. I made her very happy. And I came out later in the day, put a second coat on. I wanted to get the hinges, the little uh, brackets, not hinges, painted. And while this was drying, I was thinking maybe I'll get something else painted. Well, it was brutally cold out there. I really was rushing. This is in fast forward. I was just wishing to get inside the house where the coffee machine is and it's warm. So on this very unpredictable day, at least we got this part done. By tomorrow we can install that shelf and assure you, here in the Northeast, summer is coming. <laughs> Boy, look at the snow in the backyard. Maybe I'm lying. Turned into a weatherman. So the last thing I, of the day I did, I checked the weather. It's supposed to never get above freezing tomorrow. So what that'll mean, rather than trying to put the push on today and rush things through, we're not going to be able to paint, but it'll give me an opportunity tomorrow to to do some sanding and this this was an unpredictable day 
But I like it that way to be honest and I'll be back in the shop tomorrow morning. Now this morning we wake up early. I was hoping to catch some good painting weather. Looks, it looks really nice but the temperature is way down below freezing again. So let me ask you, is this winter ever going to end? Are we ever going to get some springtime writing weather, painting weather? So today, it's 28 now, the real feel is 21, but it, by noon it's supposed to come up to over freezing. So I think we're going to do some sanding today. I think we're going to just turn the thermostat in the house up. <laughs> yeah, by noon it's supposed to come up over freezing. I already see we got ice on a pond again today. Look at this, the birds are gathering. I haven't even fed them yet. They're gathering. Ugh, didn't even put any seeds in yet. No, that didn't take long. <laughs> oh, we love you, Wendy. <laughs> fill, fill the feeder. Look at this guy down here. They make, this starts off every day for me perfectly. This and a nice cup of coffee. And what else? A big cup of coffee. And we're ready to start the day. Now, before I came out to the garage, I checked the weather. Later this week, we're supposed to have a couple of riding days. I'm so happy. And I'm so happy I keep these battery tenders on and keep these bikes ready to go. But it's going to be a sanding day today. Something like when you have lemons, make lemonade. You have MT-09s, go for a long ride. <laughs> hey, but we really want to get this. The two projects, the Ducati and the wheels, when it's this cold, I just got to wait until it comes up above freezing, but I can get a lot of the sanding done. So that would be a good plan for today. And every day is an adventure. No Groundhog Days. Now, it's very different than yesterday. It's a lot colder, and the wind isn't blowing as bad. So, And this is dried up overnight. Ooh, that looks nice. So Karen wants me to put up the shelf, trying to get ready for summer. And we're back to having ice on the pond. I can't believe it. Just when it melts, I think spring is in the way. And <laughs> it ain't here yet. <laughs> Sorry. The last of the snow, the, the stone animals are coming out. Wow. Spring is in the air. Okay, time to go to work. Now, I thought this through last night. This part is pretty much ready for a final sanding with 2,000 grit and buffing. Well, this wheel is done and ready for the sprocket, but Vlad had to postpone for personal reasons. The, well, let's see how this... The, so here's the deal. If I can get this, this needs more clear. I, the two priority things, both of these things I want to sand and get more clear on. So if I start sanding now, and it's nice and early, I may get them both sanded and ready for clear. Or in the worst of all worlds, if the wind starts howling, I'll have them sanded and ready for a better day. So the plan is I'll start with the Ducati part and go to work. Step one is to get this part up off the table so it's a little more convenient to work on it and these rolls of paper towels and toilet paper just seem to be just about the right size but I like to have it relatively stable now what I'll do is I want to get some thousand grit paper and I want to do one section in real time just to show that in real time and then pretty much segment it out piece by piece by piece the reason for doing this part first, if the wind doesn't come up, I'll get clear on this. But if the wind starts blowing, that's this is this is a vulnerable part. If the wind gets under here, it's in the neighbor's yard. So again, Jay Leno has not called me yet about giving me use of his spray booth. And this is 1000 grit Merca. We were lucky enough, lucky enough years ago to figure out <laughs> the Merca. And what's the other one? I can never remember the name. The, the we bought, What happened? We bought some cheap sandpaper from, I don't remember, off the internet or somewhere. And it was terrible. And then I said, you know, I'm just going to pay the price. Buy the big brand paper, Merca 3M, the uh, Indasa, and it, it cuts the job in half. Good quality sandpaper. This is 1,000 grit. I'm going to cut the sheet, used in soft block, and do once, again, do one section in real time. So part of the thing to always try to do is to keep the, the paper wet. From time to time, I always try to change the direction of the sandpaper if possible. That seems to help. And the soft block 
all of the flat surfaces and all of the low valleys and everything else I have to pretty much do by hand now. A job like this takes time. This is not a five minute job. So I, I try to break it up into segments and that's the best way I know of to do a long job. It's like having, if you had a long journey, do a small amount every day or and never, never be prone to rush it. Now, I want to do this one section in real time, but there'll be on this part here probably 20 sections like this, so you can kind of figure out how long this takes. And then the final thing is the detailing out of everything. And then the big thing, is the wind going to blow this part away today, or are we safe? Okay, so I've shown that in real time. I'll get the camera up close and I'll show we have we have one deep defect there. I want to do this without a camera cut. Let me just take the camera off here. This is what we'd like to have the whole part look like. When we get to a defect, we're going to block sand over that. Up here the little moon craters, but we want everything at the end of the job to look like that. And, then and we want to be real careful over the decals. Super, super careful. I don't want to break through with the decals. And as I said, here's the thing, break this up, section, 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 and being super, super careful over the decal. Now these decals, these are way thicker than the ones we normally use the water slide decals. These are way, way thicker, so I want to be careful. I do not want to go through, if at all possible. And even if I only get this part done today and I don't get the wheel done, I don't care. I'd rather have this part perfect. And if I can't paint, I'll be ready to paint the next day that the wind isn't blowing. I'm doing one little section here and fast forward, but it just gives you an idea of how much time, how much energy goes into a labor of love like this. A sand out of a part like this is a labor of love. And a little by little, each section at a time, just, just have to be patient and take your time. This is just a time-consuming thing. Now I'm trying to be really careful around all the little gaps in the decal. I do not want to break through if, at this stage if I don't have to. Just a question of a lot of patience to do this. One letter at a time until I can minimize the amount of little moon craters or little any little dust that's in the paint. Anything that I want the next coat of clear to fill in or level off. And the thing that works for me is just to be patient, take your time, and of course, the most important thing on a sand out like this, drink extra coffee. Now, a lot of these spots like inside the scoops where the, you really can't get a sanding block. And of course, at the very end, you have to detail everything out by hand anyway. But trying to get everything flat, get as many of the little moon craters out of this, as many of the little... There's dust in the paint and whatever from that day that we put this on, but when we're done, this should be ready. And so far the wind is holding up, but <laughs> no, an hour from now that may not be true. Well, needless to say, this has been a big, big sand out and it looks like we've got it pretty much ready. I'm not sure how the wind is gonna play out. We'll be ready to go check it out. And certainly we wanna minimize any risk that the part's gonna blow over if we have that that wind but it would be nice to get the clear on today assuming it's doable and this this took a lot longer than I thought it would but it always does I'm always optimistic and then I have to be realistic at the very end and the final thing is going to be a nice wipe down with prep ball attack ragged and see if the weather is going to be our friend today <laughs> I don't know I feel like I'm on a dating site here or something Anyway, we have, we've made it through a pretty, pretty rough winter so far, but it would be nice to get this done today. But again, it's a fine line between I don't want to compromise it. I don't want to wind up sorry that the part blew out into the, the highway or something. All right. So once this is dry, we'll fire up the compressor and see if it's our lucky day. Now it has the look out there that we'll be able to paint, but I'm going to try to stack the deck in my favor, of course, and be really careful. This is this is the kind of thing where we're right on the edge, and it's up over freezing already, so 
We maybe, maybe be our lucky day. We'll find out. So here's the clear we're going to use. It's a four to one mix. We have a brand new gun and it's been spraying out great as you can look at the other parts. And I'm real happy with the material. And again, I say to Gavco to five star and this very similar. And, and maybe this might be a little better. I don't know. Well, we're going to find out. But they're all good. As a brand new gun, we only sprayed once with it, but the tip is always, always in and clean, perfectly clean acetone, especially for a clear gun. Of course, it's always good to keep a gun just for clear. Never put anything else but clear in it. Stack the deck in your favor. Now, I know some of the tips I try to put on the video are redundant from video to video because we have so many new subscribers that um, they might have not seen the video before this, as an example. And the idea of sharing information, sometimes it does get redundant. And it's a four to one mix and we'll be ready to spray. Now another useful tip for sealing the toppies and from time to time, even when they're new, they don't seal perfectly. And what happens, you're painting something and a drop goes down onto your part. Well, I put the blue tape. And don't be smart like I was. I thought at one time, I know how to seal that up. I put the blue tape and put rubber bands around it. I thought, oh, that'll really seal it. Uh. And what happened, one of the rubber bands popped and went right into my part. So that's, uh, don't do that, <laughs> don't try that at home or something. <laughs> Well, somehow it looks like we uh, lucked out on the amount of wind. It was a manageable thing, and I, both coats, I got two coats on this total. This is the first coat. They laid down real nice, and it was above freezing, so this, this was really, really an easy spray out. Not, not unlike some of the times in the past where it's really been difficult. Got our first coat laid down beautifully. I just can't believe how nice that came out. We got a little bit of wind to deal with, but nothing really severe. I'll take it. I'm not going to complain one bit. Now that's going to sit about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour. I'll go have a cup of coffee or lunch or whatever. The shelf that Karen wanted put up is drying over there. I put a second coat on that, both sides. So we have an hour of dry time to kill, and I come back here and put the second coat on. And the second coat here, yeah, I think you can see even that it, the breeze started kicking up, but certainly a manageable amount. Not risking the part that it's going to blow away or have be some kind of a problem. But I, I think we made the right call. It was, uh, well, it was debatable early in the day whether this was going to be the kind of day I'd want to get these parts painted, but... By the end of the day, it looked like I made all the right calls. All right, just a enough wind come up on that second coat to make it challenging, make it an interesting spray out. Anyway, I'm going to check that. Oh man, that came out nice. Oh boy. I'll get a clear out a spot in the garage, put that out in the garage. That's going to dry outside for 24 hours, then we'll bring it in. Well, the last two days have been a great adventure, and I think that's going to work out great. Now, it's got to sit out here 24 hours, then we'll put it inside under a heating vent, of course. Then I'll do this later this afternoon. That'll be a simple thing. Karen will be so happy. She'll be able to start planting her little pre-season plants. Well, I really feel like that's going to dry up overnight, like that, just beautifully. And all I can say is we have had great adventures this winter. Weather-wise, paint-wise, we had a few rides. What's coming up in the next week, though, and Karen just shared this with me. I didn't notice. In three days from now, it's supposed to be 
a break in the weather. And we're supposed to go up into the 40s and 50s every day. So it would be nice if in the next couple of days I can finish up some of these projects and open up some free time for riding or, or running away from home and joining the army or something. I don't know, the Foreign Legion. Anyway, that's in the bank today. I'll have the shelf done an hour from now. I want to thank the healthcare workers. Guys, thank you so much. It's unbelievable. I really, really appreciate it. And as always, to you who suffer through watching these things spraying and sanding and family things, thank you so much for watching. So we do try to post up something every day and something interesting, something motorcycle related. I thought I'd take this opportunity to show some old footage I have of Bob Navola. Now, Bob, this is a very funny day. Bob had gotten a brand new VFR. This is the second ride he had on the VFR. And we went out and I, this is Harriman Park, the normal roads we ride on it. And he said, yeah, let's take a nice sweet ride and, you know, break in the motor and take everything in, in stride. And I, I think I have the footage of this and I'll post it if I can find it out on YouTube. On the first day he had the bike, I believe it was the first day, so it's probably the video just before this. He was leading the way because he wanted to set the pace. He was had a brand new bike and of course he's treasuring it and trying not to scratch it and whatever. And what happened was we were we were going down in Harriman Park on Arden, came around the hairpin and there were two bears in the road. And I had the video camera running. I'm sure I have that on video. I just have to find it. And he went right in between two of them. And <laughs> it was one of the most exciting <laughs> memories I have of his new bike. But anyway, I wanted to mention another funny story about Bob. He's one of the original A-teamers, of course, and he rides the bike with one hand. He's got a, a handicap, but he's dealt with it amazingly well. He's a super, super good rider. You never even think about it when you're riding with him, that, that he has to deal with that. And to his credit, we were riding five of us. I love to tell these old stories. We were riding, I think, Glenn and Joe and, and whatever, and Bob, and we were riding somewhere up up north, and it started raining, and it was raining even worse, and then it really rained, and the wind was blowing, and Bob, we pulled in for gas, and Bob said, I know Joel will remember this, Bob pulled in the gas station, he says, I'm going to call my wife and tell her, let's go sit in my garage with the heat on or whatever, and so I, heard, I see he's got a cell phone, he calls his wife Nanda, and, and Nanda's, yeah, 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 oh, come on over. Well, by the time we got from the gas station to where his house was, probably a half an hour ride in the pouring, pouring rain, too. And one of those days where you think, what was I thinking? We got there. She had the garage door open. She had hot coffee on a little table. She had freshly baked cookies. To this day, I don't know how she did that all in a half an hour. And <laughs> Wonderful. One of the other really sweet stories, Bob, when we, we had a party at his house, and Bob says he watched that video. I think it's a birthday party. He watched the video 500 times or something. I thought there were a lot of people looking at the video. It's only Bob. He watches it over and over and over again. But anyway, that's pretty cool. But anyway, worth mentioning because we're just starting our planting season and probably in a month from now. A couple of years ago, his, his wife, Nanda, gave us a one zinnia in a little pot the size of a teacup, which then piqued my interest in zinnias. And I wound up getting seeds and buying seeds from several different places. And by the end of the summer, I for the first year, I probably had a thousand zinnias in the property. And the year after it, I could have went in business, could have gone in business. Karen will probably correct me on that. But it, it doesn't even matter. This is just great old footage, and this is why I love shooting a video. I love reliving these old moments. I'm sure when Bob sees this, maybe he'll watch this video 500 times too. Bob, sorry you had to get transferred. He went because of his job. He had to go to Atlanta, had to sell his house. Still working for Mercedes and still driving all those high-end cars and uh, telling everybody that they're his. <laughs> He's the only guy, the only guy in the state of Georgia that has a handicapped parking spot at his job at Mercedes. He really does. That's not, I'm just not making that up. Anyway, 
I hope you enjoy this old nostalgia. I hope you enjoy the videos. I hope you're picking up some good tips. I hope you'll share what you know and I don't on a future video. And the most thing I always tell people, thank you guys so much for watching.